Okay, so I know gays are people, but are they people? I mean, equal rights, sure, but all the equal rights? That's asking a little much, isn't it? No? And why the fuck do we keep acting like it is? I mean, don't get me wrong. There's definitely social progress to applaud over the last decade or so, but this piecemeal way that we're doling out equality is insane. It's like we've decided to switch which side of the road we drive on, but we're doing it one make of car at a time. Look, there aren't two sides to this issue. On one side, we've got at least 15 million Americans who want all the same shit the other 304 million of us get. And on the other side, we've got a bunch of bigots who think that they're gross or sinful or whatever adjective they want to wrap their bigotry in. And yet, as a society, we're still pandering to those bigots. And even many of us allied with the oppressed minority are hesitant to dismiss their prejudice entirely. You know, in the wake of the Obersfeld decision, I couldn't count how many times I heard people say, people allied with the LGBT cause say stuff like, well, the Christians need to pipe down because it's not like the law is going to force them to let gay couples marry in their churches. It's not like the law is going to force pastors to preside over gay weddings. I've even heard atheist allies say, nobody wants that. But why the fuck wouldn't we? You know, if churches provide a service, they need to provide that service for everybody. If a church turned gay people away at the door for the Sunday sermon or turned homeless gay people away from their soup kitchen, they should be treated no differently than a diner that turns away black people or a movie theater that turns away Jews. And if one of the services they provide is weddings, they should have to provide those services for anybody that's legally allowed to marry. So ultimately, yes, we are going to force Christians to marry gay couples in their churches. We're going to force any pastor or priest who performs marriages to do it for any couple, regardless of their sexual orientation or his bigotry. And along the way, we're going to sue churches out of existence and turn them into coffee shops and sex toy emporiums. Either that, or we're going to give in to bigotry and stop short of equality. Look, Christianity has drawn a line in the cultural sand here, and it is our moral obligation to cover it over with our footprints. I mean, I know there are plenty of progressive churches out there that embrace the LGBT community a while back and still more just see the writing on the wall and don't want to dig their heels in on a fight they can't win. But the dominant Christian voice on this issue is anti-gay and the dominant anti-gay voice is Christian. And the numbers bear this out. You know, according to the most recent surveys I could find, between 44 and 53 percent of Americans believe that homosexuality is a sin. And when you consider that only about three quarters of Americans have a religion that believes in sin, you figure that even on the low end, more than 60 percent of American Christians still agree that God hates fags, as, as long as you don't word it that way. Now, look, you and I know how this plays out. You know, we've studied our American history, and we know that 50 years from now, the Christians are going to be taking credit for the gay rights movement. They're going to dig up six forward-thinking pastors from today and act like they were the ones really speaking for Christianity way back now. They'll say that when you think about it, Jesus was the first real LGBT activist, and the fact that the most Christian states were also the most anti-gay states, well, that's just a coincidence like it was with civil rights. But that's no comfort to a gay or trans person living today, because while we're watching the arc of history slowly bend towards justice, they're patiently awaiting each new slice of equality like Michael J. Fox was dealing canasta. And in the meantime, they have to listen to progressive voices. The voices of their allies occasionally say shit like, well, gay people should be able to get married, sure, but I don't think Christian Mingle should have to let them use their website. And, and, and look, with all due apologies to our libertarian listeners, there is no way to get there without passing through prejudice along the way. It might not be a conscious prejudice, but unless your starting assumption is that gay people don't deserve the full slate of rights we afford the rest of the people, your argument makes no fucking sense. If somebody set up a whites-only dating website, would you complain when the law forced them to rebuild that site or shut it down? And if they did, would any of us hesitate to apply the motive of prejudice? And if anybody wants to argue that you can reach that conclusion through purely libertarian principles, then I would argue that those purely libertarian principles are inherently prejudice. I mean, look, bigotry, at least in my opinion, is kind of the Achilles heel of libertarianism. You know, that and social inequality, inequality of educational opportunity and inherited wealth. And without getting rid of those four things, the libertarian ideals will always have to be constrained by legal action to preserve equality and to believe otherwise is simply utopian. So ultimately, the committed libertarian should be at the vanguard of my position here, since the closer we get to social equality, the more libertarian our laws could really be. And by the way, if this diatribe pisses you off, I want you to try an experiment before you write me an email about it. Just take your argument, whatever it is, and write it down. Then try swapping the word gay or trans or LGBT with black or Hispanic or Jew and see how it looks to you. My guess is that a lot of you, when you do, are going to realize that what you're really saying is that you know gays are people, but are they people?